I think what I want to do is push things up. I want to set out my slider. Just experimenting right here for a good little while. Let's let's see how it works. Okay, so right now, oh, stay on me. My time lapse is going. The settings that I have right now on my slider for a five second time lapse at the end at 24 frames per second. So there's 120 photos that is doing. Every single one is at a full second and I'm giving the interval a second as well so that you know it can buffer even though I've got high speed cards. I switched the depth of field to an F9 because I wanted to get like full range of everything that's happening uh, in terms of focus. That uh, first one looked great at a second exposure. The, all the motion was fantastic. A little bit of breeze thrown through, uh, you know, the trees, the leaves and nature. And it was, it was all great. I wanted to see now what would happen if I switched up the setting to just be a little bit of motion. So instead of a full second, I'm now doing, uh, what is it? A 10th of a second and obviously switch up the other settings. So I'm now instead of at stop four on the variable ND, I'm at stop two uh, for just a lot more brightness. Uh, and I'm also at 7 to 1 f-stop instead of f9. Instead of at 100 ISO, I'm at 160. So a little different in other areas as well, but I want to see how this works at just a little bit of motion. And then the next one, I want to see at like a much higher frame rate, what that kind of looks like. It's a great time for me to experiment. You know, kind of controlled settings. The sun is just out, there's no clouds. Got a good breeze, it's fantastic. I have it up now to a 60th of a second. Still F7.1, but obviously now the ISO is up to 1000. Still not that bad. A7R4 can handle up to like 2500 before it gets a little grainy. And we're in daylight, so the grain can hide. So I'm not really worried about that. But I am wondering what it's gonna look like with the water now frozen. Because at a 50th of a second on water, you're still getting a little bit of movement, but I'm not sure what it's going to look like. It's not like a, a giant waterfall where it's just free fall gravity. It's, it's hitting rocks everywhere and it's slowing down. So I really like that a lot, but I have changed the angle. Uh, I'm now pushing through leaves, give it some more depth, lengthen back the time. I think in between a second and a half a second is going to work and it's just going straight in and I think it's going to look great. It is hot out and I can't run my hands through my hair or else I get sweaty. One thing to note about the Shark Slider Nano is that your time-lapse settings, specifically the time duration of the output video that you want, does not stay what it was when you turn it off to turn it on. So I had it at a five second at 24 frames. So that's 120 uh, frames, 120 shots to get to five seconds. And I turned it off, came over here, and I, I started a time lapse without looking at that. And it had 24 frames at one second. So it was only gonna do 24 shots. So I had to redo that setting. So good thing to note, that does change. So keep an eye on it. What I am almost done doing is my first parallax movement for a time lapse. Okay, and now for my final one, what I am doing is a parallax rising shot. And I have it set so that the focus point is for, you know, the finished frames, not the beginning, because it's coming through the leaves at the beginning. And for all of these, I've kept the exact same settings internally on the camera itself. Powering this down. Uh, whoa, don't do it on an incline. <laughs> Oh, that that could have been very bad. Uh, so that's it for the time lapses. And I'd love to know in the comments which ones you guys like the most. Uh, if you would have done anything different, you let me know. And I would love to keep doing this for you guys. So I'll see you on the next one.